Oh, hey everybody, this is Arvermel47. Uh, today is June the 15th, 2011. I'm making this video at 12.35 p.m. Central Time. Uh, here's the solar wind parameters um, over the last 24 hours. You can see the uh, BZ component has over the last several hours remained uh, in the positive or the northern range which keeps our geomagnetic field tight and quiet as I'd like to call it and also the uh, coronal hole that was elevated the speed of our solar wind has begun to lose its geo effectiveness in other words it's rotating out of an area where the stream is hitting the earth so the speeds going down although we do have a large coronal hole coming from the other side and actually some other stuff coming from the other side of the sun that's beginning to rotate into view that probably has a little more concern. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that the solar wind parameters are pretty much in a good shape, so uh, geomagnetic storming at this point uh, looks a relatively uh, low to almost just background nothing. So, what I do want to bring your attention to here, this is the a magnetogram, which uh, the black and white shows the difference again in the, the north-south polarity um, of a sunspot group or just the journal sun. Uh, this is a group that has gotten a little, it's act together a little more and has probably had uh, some like subsea flaring but that's about it. This is a dissipating group here. This is the puppy that uh, concerns me right now because it's just now rotating on to the solar face and uh, it has produced an M-class flare already. It produced the one yesterday uh, evening and um, so there's still going to be the potential for some more flaring out of it, and as you can see, it's it's it looks rather complicated. And as it rotates more into view, we'll be able to tell more about it. But so we've got this guy to deal with coming across, and whatever might else might pop up, because <laughs> sunspots don't have to just rotate on; they can actually just come from underneath the sun and out. So or not underneath, but from the interior of the sun and then come out. So again. The sun, we just have to keep an eye on because you just never know what's uh, what it's going to do. But sometimes it gives us heads up, like this again right here. Something to watch. Uh, solar flaring already been coming from it, so uh, I expect more. Also, in this area down here, we had a solar filament collapse, and that's like a magnetic filament. It's like a big, tall uh, band of plasma that's uh, magnetically uh, semi-stable when it's up in the air, but eventually they collapse and when it collapsed yesterday it sent off a pretty good coronal mass ejection okay here's a, a coronagraph lasco imagery showing that coronal mass ejection right there very large uh, in fact a, a lot of the parameters show that it probably uh, could give us a glancing blow on earth uh, probably on Friday uh, the 17th is right now the kind of the current expected time frame. It, was, it came off the sun at about uh, 830 kilometers per second. So again it looks uh, very impressive. Again thank goodness it's not like directly earth directed but it does show some uh, decent like rounding if you see the after it when it happens you see stuff right, right there I'm going to let it go through here again, and I'll show you as it explodes out here, we see stuff coming this way. So, again, active region coming around, and uh, again, that's a coronal mass ejection from a collapsing solar filament. Uh, I see no coronal mass ejection related to the M-class flare yesterday, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, sometimes uh, coronal mass ejections can consume each other. In other words, one overtakes another, or um, they kind of can cancel each other out just due to their magnetic uh, makeup. So anyway, something to uh, potentially watch for coming up this Friday. Uh, and I believe uh, starting this weekend, things a lot of things are probably going to be on the uptick for next week now I mentioned uh, coronal holes earlier this is a shot from uh, this one of the stereo spacecraft we have two stereo a stereo B a being ahead and B being behind this is a shot from the stereo behind spacecraft uh, satellite which shows us what's coming up to rotate around to earth facing 
And what really catches my attention is this is a very large coronal hole right here. Now the winds are probably coming out of that. In fact, um, some of the the stuff you saw producing that coronal mass ejection could have been part of what was coming out of this uh, coronal hole. Also, we had our filament that collapsed in this area. Here's the sunspot group that has some twisted magnetics to it. So again, all this beginning to rotate into view, and this has the potential to mess with us here on Earth, at least geomagnetically, uh, maybe beginning uh, this weekend, and then throughout next week, it's uh, the sun is going to probably put on a couple of different shows for us right now. Uh, just a, a quick note, uh, I was looking at uh, protons earlier. Uh, the proton uh, uh, flux has diminished somewhat. It's slightly elevated, but it's not anywhere near what it was. It's stayed up for a long time. Again, I have no explanation for that, but I just thought I'd uh, put that note out there for you. Okay, I just wanted to quickly touch also on terrestrial weather, in other words, Earth weather. Uh, this is the, uh, it's called the Day 4 through 8 Severe Weather Outlook. Uh, normally I don't even uh, look out this far a lot of times unless I see something that catches my eye in some of the computer models and then all, obviously the Storm Prediction Center has caught something also. Uh, this uh, shows that, that there's like a 30% chance or higher of a severe thunderstorm in this area and that would be on Day 5 which is Sunday. Now they don't have Monday or Tuesday into next week on here but I would expect to see more stuff being put in here uh, in the next day or so with the uh, the uh, extended outlooks but uh, some of the computer models show some some nasty clashing of air masses in the central sections and of the US even in, in, into the east and some of it looks like it could be uh, tornadic so uh, there's going to be a potential tornadic outbreak next week again this just showing the the beginnings of the, the severe weather we've, we've got a, a pretty stout system that's coming out of the north and it's strong enough that it's going to drive a cold front all the way down to me which I'll be certainly happy to get because it's a, been 100 degrees every day and windy and humid and that's just it nothing we hate that so anyway just a heads up for uh, regular weather on earth uh, I'm looking at the potential for the tornado outbreak uh, in this area next week uh, probably starting around uh, Tuesday maybe even through Thursday into the eastern sections depending on how fast the storm system will move through but all this hot humid air here and then some cool dry air coming out of Canada and here's the beginnings of it uh, on the day five outlook by the SPC. Okay, that's it, folks, uh, for me today. Um, just wanted again to give you a heads up on uh, the upcoming uh, solar outlook and the uh, terrestrial weather outlook, and both of them look like uh, we may be having a lot to talk about next week. Uh, anyway, y'all have a good one.